news. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened. Uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. There's almost a sense downtown in uh, New York behind me, down by the World Trade Centers, of uh, just an area completely closed off as the rescue workers try to do their job. But this isn't the first building that um, has suffered as a result. We know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also collapsed as a result of this huge amount of falling debris from 110 floors of two, the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash, and we know that behind that there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline, a symbol of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely disappeared now, and New York is still unable to take on board what has happened to them today. Presumably there were very few people in the Salomon building when it collapsed. I mean, th there were, I suppose, fears of possible further collapses around the area. That's what you would hope because this whole downtown area behind me has been completely sealed off and evacuated apart from the emergency workers. That was done by the mayor, Rudy Giuliani, uh, much earlier today uh, because of, the course, the dreadful collapse of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. But uh, New York very much a city still in chaos. The phones are not working properly. The subway lines are not working properly. And we know that down there near the World Trade Center there are three schools that um, are being turned into triage centers for emergency treatment. And I know that over in New York Harbor, where the famous Statue of Liberty is, there's a field hospital where 1,500 people are being treated. And we have heard, though it's unconfirmed as yet, that 100 New York City police officers have been taken there as well for treatment. But we do need to confirm uh, those figures for the officers. It's now, what, some eight hours since the attacks. Is there any estimate yet available of the number of casualties in the World Trade Center? I think we can only go at this point with the words expressed by the mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani, that it's too frightening to think how many there could be. We know that uh, it's about almost 300 people on the airliners that were used in these attacks. But you've got to remember, this was 9 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday morning. It's busy in downtown Manhattan in the financial district then. The World Trade Center itself has 50,000 workers. There are tens of thousands of tourists who go up there every day. The figures are almost too frightening to, to contemplate. You can understand why nobody yet wants to put a figure on them. Listening to the mayor, Rudy Giuliani, a bit earlier, uh, one of his messages was, you know, business as usual, you know, we won't let this get us down. But presumably, a lot of Manhattan people must have, uh, have fled the city to Long Island to get away from possible further attacks. Well, a lot of people were certainly trying to, but you remember that very early on, all the bridges and uh, tunnels to the city, as well as the airports, were closed. New York was sealed, essentially. Now, we do know that the Long Island Railroad has become, begun running again to get people out of the city if they can, and people who can't manage to get out and perhaps lived in that area, they're being offered accommodation in uh, empty school buildings. But uh, certainly I saw earlier on today huge crowds of people desperately trying to walk up uh, upper Manhattan to get as far away as possible. Um, I think nobody really knows how to go or where to go and the, you have to remember even even now I don't think people can sink it, it can sink in to so people what's happened. We haven't for the past uh, hour or so heard much from the people of Manhattan. You're with them there. I mean what are they saying tonight after this catastrophic attack? As I said many just cannot believe this has happened and I've seen 
you know, big burly men and women with the, you know, tears in their eyes today, shaking their heads, wondering what on earth is going on. There was a, a, a sense of panic. Our reports from the scene were of people just absolutely horrified. And I've already seen some photographs of that a, a man took down in the, the downtown area. And it looks like the aftermath of, of a huge atom bomb or something just just full of debris and of like a white carpeting of snow from all the dust and rubbish that had fallen. I don't think people can comprehend. They certainly have lost any feeling of safety. Um, there's still a great pride in the city. People are determined to, fought, to fight back. But a great sense of shock and loss. People keep looking at the sky, for example, where you can see the plume of smoke and say, when that's gone, it won't be there anymore. Our Twin Towers won't be there. Such a symbol of New York. Are they talking yet about revenge and what the government should do to counter this uh, threat, or are they numb still? I think people are still numb, and I don't think people are talking about revenge in that way at all yet. I think people are, are still too traumatized. They, we don't know how many people have been killed. We, we, we can't even put a figure, I think, when you talk to people on, on, they don't even say how many people might have been killed and injured. And I think that feeling until the idea of the, of the devastation, people don't really know what to say or what to think. I think they feel the bubble of their security has, as being in America has definitely been popped. This city and this country will not be the same. But they don't really know where to turn. Uh, that's the very sad thing. I think there's going to be a lot of very, very traumatized people that, that has hit them very, very hard. Jane, I think many of us, when we heard the news, perhaps on the radio earlier today, were uh, completely flabbergasted by it and, and just couldn't un comprehend it. I mean, it, was, it almost sounded too far-fetched. Uh, I was wondering what it felt like for you being in Manhattan. Well, unfortunately, I think we've lost the line with uh, Jane Stanley in Manhattan. Perhaps we can rejoin her and follow that up later. Across America, citizens are trying to come to grips with the enormity of what has happened.